Chef Melody, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we are just so excited to have you as one of our chefs to watch. And I like to talk about people's origin stories about how they, how they kind of got into this. And I read something about you and that's when you were a kid, you played restaurant and you had your family members be the servers and you were the head chef. So can you tell us just a little bit about that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm the oldest of three. Um, we grew up in the mountains, so, um, and of course, that's before, I won't tell you how old I am, but that's before uh, internet, you know, we, we didn't have, uh, we had video games, but not like today, and no cable, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, we had to, we had to actually play like kids, so yeah, I would uh, get my younger brother and sister, and I would always make the food, and Sometimes they would help me, but they were definitely the servers and they'd serve our parents and we'd tell them what was on the menu. And uh, yeah, yeah, I remember my first recipe were my famous in my household um, croutons. So I'd you know, saute them in a pan with tons of butter and get them nice and crispy and brown. And that was oh. my first recipe. <laughs> that is awesome. So you knew from a young age, I think what your path was going to be, it sounds like. Um, I didn't know, no, but I, I always loved cooking for sure, yeah. Cool, cool. And um, when you say the mountains, this is the mountains in California, right? Northern California, one of the most beautiful parts of the country, for sure. So you got to grow yeah. up in some very nice nature. And you're still based in Northern California, too, right? I am. Yeah, yeah. I grew up, uh, I guess, gold country, they would call it, up where uh, gold was discovered. Um, and I just moved back up towards that way um, recently. Oh, that's cool. Nice. <laughs> Um, and talking about another one of your first experiences, you worked at a Baskin Robbins. Like, talk about a, a dream job for anyone. I did. I did. That was my second job. My first job was 14 at a bed and breakfast inn. Then I went to Baskin Robbins. And I was there, I always say, for longer than anyone should ever work at Baskin Robbins. Usually that's like a summer job and then you're right. done. But I was there three and a half years. Nice. Um, I loved it. And because I think my favorite part, that's where I learned how to decorate cakes. And it was ice cream cake. So you had to work really fast before they melted, get them decorated, and then pop them in the freezer. Um, but that, again, was another like little, you know, push the button of um, curiosity on like, these are, the, you can do this too with food. So yeah, uh, yeah, loved it. That is awesome, definitely. And I wanted to ask you kind of like present day, like what are some of the techniques or new things that you're looking at like in your role because you're kind of overseeing like a few different locations, a few different things. So what's inspiring you now? Oh, I've, I've been wanting to get into fermenting and it's not new, right? Of course yeah. it's not new at all. But um, <laughs> I wanna get more into fermenting and learning more about it. Um, definitely uh, and preserving right how to preserve mm -hmm. food uh, we just bought like I said a house up in the mountains again and it's uh, quite a big you know a lot of acreage and we're going to oh, start nice. hopefully a little um, we're starting on no-till learning how to do no-till farming um, and gardening so uh, I would love that and then to be able to preserve the food and then foraging is my third thing I think that you know big food nerd thing that I'd love to do I've bought a couple books and um we actually, I just found some wild chervil that's like mm. all along our front yard. I was like, what is it? My, my daughter noticed it. She goes, it smells like salsa out here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we figured out a wild chervil. It's kind of cool. Uh, every time I hear stories like that, I'm just like, why don't we all live in California? It's so wonderful <laughs> we are. Our yards Love do it. not smell like salsa here in Ohio. <laughs> Unless we <laughs> threw it out their window <laughs> under my lawn, which is, which is apt to happen. But mm. um, yeah, like, I think a lot of chefs, like as we get into spring are kind of like we're these fresh items and, you know, using your produce. So I want to just find out what's some of your just best ways that you like when you have all this fresh stuff, when you are a chef and you're like, oh, we're getting all these many things and the preserving would be a way to do it. But what are some other sort of like tips that you have to make sure that you're making the most out of the season? um once you actually get the product in or I guess so or yeah, the yeah. um to get it in. so I like doing stuff really fresh and not doing you know keeping it simple um right um so and showing off the produce so if it, here in California we're really lucky to have amazing produce and you really don't have to do much to it at all so right um summer of course stone fruit peaches are my favorite so um just oh. 
I, I discovered this at a client's house uh, one day. I was working as a private chef. They just got a little creme fraiche, fresh sliced piece of peaches on top, mm. and then a touch of brown sugar. And oh. then you just eat the, oh, so good. Oh my gosh, that's um, And then sometimes some cracked uh, black pepper on top of that. Amazing. Ooh. I just um, yeah, but- I love that peaches are amazing. I get, I really can't wait for, that's one thing about summer too. That's, that's going to be amazing. And I saw that you had done something and this, I'm going to definitely follow up with you later. Cause I've got a story coming up with different pasta shapes and I noticed you had done a dish with pepperdell and lamb that sounded amazing. And I just wanted to ask, what is it about pepperdell and lamb that kind of always goes together? Or maybe it's sort of just like a braised meat thing where it's like, why is that shape so good for, with that kind of thing? That is a good question. It does really go good. It is the braised meat thing, I think, in general, because yeah, short ribs kind of, go sort of really well. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can do that, you know, it, with the sauce that it comes with. I think it's because it's so wide, it's got a lot of surface area. Yeah. So the sauce just, you know, sticks to that nice big wide noodle and just the yeah. juicy, um, you know, shredded meat. And then something. So if you're doing that in spring, that's a little heavy, right? So then you can, I think that dish I paired with some spring peas or and or pea shoots or something like that would be great to kind of freshen it up um, with like a little lemon vinaigrette on the side. And that could maybe you can throw anything that you forage into a dish like that too. Yes. So it's, yes. <laughs> For so sure. you, I'm, I want to go back a little bit to your, to your new house where you have all this land. That is so cool. I'm so jealous <laughs> because I'm tired of having neighbors to be honest <laughs> and just like all this land. So are you like with your garden, can you talk a little more about that? Um, that method that you, that you mentioned the no, what is it? No till. Yeah. So no or low till farming or gardening. Um, it's, it's, the concept isn't new to me, but it's um, learning about it and having the knowledge and being yeah. able to, you know, um, actually do it is new to me. So my, I got my husband on board, yay, because, you know, when I'm gone traveling for work, he's the one that's there doing everything. So um, he's, he's got to get him on board. Go. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it has a lot to do with, you know, t- t- turning the soil like that and, and rototilling it, tilling it. Um, it releases all the carbon in back into the air. So if, if you let it be basically and trying to shorten this as much as possible, but if you let it be and you let it do its thing, yeah. it sequesters carbon down into the soil. Okay. And it can actually really help, you know, you know, the by taking all that carbon and just sequestering it in the soil. So it's down there and it's doing good because carbon can be great if it's in the right spot, right? If it's down there in the soil, it's awesome up here in the air, not so much. Not so um, I think that's the biggest thing with the no-till and low-till farming. Um, that is cool. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> something that I want to, that I want to look into more because I, I love the agriculture side of mm-hmm. the go along with cooking. Um, and then another dish I wanted to ask you about, it was something that you had made with Spetzel. And that's just, that's one of my favorite things. Like that's, mm-hmm. I just love that. And that's something too, that's kind of like, like a grandma would make. And it's, it's just that comforting and I think, I don't think it was like a schnitzel that you made with it, but it was, and now, now I'm wishing I could look back on it because you, I'm sure you've made many things. Yeah. But it was so fun. I was actually, I was going to do um, a braised lamb with that one too. Um, oh, nice. Funny, I don't, I don't even really eat that much lamb, but there's two lamb dishes. Here. Uh-huh. Um, it's a good and dish. Oh, it, is, it is delicious. Yeah, it is. It is. And I was in Colorado at that time. Um, so it was some great local lamb that we got, but they gave me, or they ordered for me, I don't know which one it was, uh, the wrong cut of lamb. Oh. Um, and so I ended up making an impromptu lamb bacon, which I had never done before. Um, they had a smoker there. And so I made some nice crispy nice. lamb bacon pieces to go on top of that um, uh, spatzel and it was delicious. Oh, that is very cool. And I've, I've heard of a lamb ham too. That- that they mm-hmm. have. so you can you can do yeah. things with it <laughs> people say that it tastes gamey but I don't I don't know or maybe I don't really know what gamey means but like I just I think it's great I just I always like mm-hmm. to have lamb I, I think yeah that. it's a different taste and some people you know don't like it but mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> absolutely so what are kind of your um like things that you're looking ahead to just this summer, like um, any projects that are happening or um, sort of like new initiatives that you're putting in place anywhere? Well, uh, we recently brought the Good Eating Company to the United States. Um, It's a company that is based in the UK. Yes. Uh, And we recently 
uh, acquired them a few years ago. So I was uh, on the team, it was really exciting. I was on the team that uh, helped kind of bring it over here and, and make it, um, uh, what, for lack of a better term, you know, palatable for, for US um, right. customers. Well, because British and US, super mm -hmm. different. Super yeah, different. so All definitely different. keeping the same yeah. ethos and the same feel, the same um, culture, yeah. um, for sure. And, you know, so, uh, you know, one of our taglines is simple food done exceptionally well. So that will definitely translate here, um, yeah. for sure. And yeah, we're really excited about, um, you know, building the company and, and spreading out all over the US. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I wonder if the language barrier is going to be a problem. Cause the one time I went to London with my family and like everything just had a different name and we were so confused. Mm. <laughs> I think we went to a grocery store and then, and first of all, we got there at like five in the morning. So we were so jet lagged. My mom and I were like a real mess when we went to London. We were like, what's going on here? And I think we asked that we were looking for jelly, like you would put on toast and they, they showed us jello, like the, like gelatin. Yeah. And I think they call Sprite cloudy lemonade. I could be wrong. If we, if we have some, Oh, really yours, please, please write in and let me know. <laughs> but, um, just as far as, as this company, I, I think now that you're talking about it, I think I did write something about this acquisition. And so we can link to that below in the description too. Okay. So people can read about that, but no, yeah. this, this really just, it sounds good. And when we say chef to watch, we really are going to continue watching you and we're going to follow up with you and find out what happens next. And especially with the foraging, I'm going to check in and with the pasta, we're going to be back and <laughs> on that. All of it. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Melody, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. 